what iPad to use. The first thing I will consider is size. So between the 11 inch and the 13 inch, you have to consider which is more suitable for your daily needs. I don't recommend getting the iPad mini because it's just not enough real estate to do anything productive. But if you're used to sketching on a mask and notebook, the 11 inch fits that pretty closely. It's a nice size to draw when you're casually sketching and brainstorming ideas. Whereas the 13 inch size is better for someone like myself who spends extended period of time like tracing, drawing, and illustrating. And it's just about the right size to draw comfortably for a, for a long period of time. So in terms of speed, I highly recommend getting a Apple Silicon chip which means it starts with the M124 a lot. So this chip is likely going to last you for many years to come. So it's really good if you want to future proof. And any iPad that, with, that comes with this chip, in my opinion, has like far more power for your everyday needs. In terms of storage, anything over 128 gigabytes is sufficient in my opinion, but not less. You can see I've had my current iPad since 2020 and it's still less than three quarter full only with 128 gigabytes of storage. But what I will recommend is perhaps investing separately in a iCloud storage with two terabyte of storage, which you can easily back up your entire iPad on the cloud. So in one of those cases, you lose or it gets stolen, your iPad gets stolen, your important files are backed up to the cloud. So when you buy a new iPad, you can quickly sync exactly the place where it was left off. And my last criteria for iPad is LiDAR. So LiDAR is that little extra camera on the back of your iPad Pro or your iPhone Pro that allows you to scan a room and build a 3D model around it. It's a really promising hardware and apps like Morpholo Trace has already has a feature for it. And I think it's only gonna get better unless you can really see yourself scanning the room a lot. I think this is the only feature that separates the iPad Pro lineup and the iPad Air for architects. However, if you just have a iPhone 12 or above, you can actually use the LiDAR camera on the iPhone and do the same thing as your iPad Pro. And after you're done scanning on the phone, you can easily transfer, transfer the file from the phone to the iPad. And with everything considered, my recommendation for most people this year is the iPad Air, which comes both in 11 and 13 inch now. If you are in the market to buy like a used iPad, there's a lot of good options too. But I wanna show you this graph on the right first because they list out all the iPad models dating back to 2016. And highlighted in the red column shows you the maximum number of layers in an app that I use called Procreate. And in the right of the column, in the yellow column, shows the corresponding internal memory that iPad comes with. This is important because the internal memory dictates how many layers you can have. So I'm going to give you three options to consider if you're trying to upgrade or buy a new one for the first time. And the first one is if you have like a $300 budget, maybe consider an iPad Pro second generation in 2016, which will give you 59 layers in Procreate. Or your second option would be, you know, if you have a $400 budget is to go for an iPad Air, 2022 model with the M1 chip. This will give you 119 layers. And the last option for about a $500 budget is to go with an app iPad Pro M1 chip, which will give you about 94 layers. In my opinion, all of these have far more layers than you need with good layer ma management and file management. So if you're finding yourself running out of layers, it's probably your fault and not the hardware or the apps. And if you're buying used, 90% of the time, I buy it directly from the Apple refurbished store. And if that's not a option, I would recommend looking to the Amazon's renewal program because it has a really good return policy or eBay if you wanna to go to bid a good 